Hello everybody, welcome back to uh, this week's update. The small account I'm growing that started off with $2,000 and we're about break even from last week. Which is fine considering how dicey the market was. Um, but that being said, uh, so this is the update for the week of January 17th to January 21st, 2022. All right, so let's break it down. So this week, I locked in, realized gains barely above where it was. So as it says right there, I've locked in $1,543, bringing the account up to plus 77% so far. And that's a 5% week, um, 5% uh, increase on the, for, from a weekly basis, sorry. But yeah, kind of um, dicey. You see, I, this is where the day started. Took a hit from the setups I mentioned in the previous video, where um, I did take some losses, and I'll cover those here in a minute as well. But if we look at it from a detailed perspective, I'm honestly, I'm not too happy about my win loss ratio. My 53%. I really need to tighten that up. That's not a no es bueno. I don't like it. So I want to at least get this up to 60-65 first. But the market is kind of tough, and I do want to tighten up the amount of trades I'm taking. So that may help. And also, my profit factor is still only 1.65. Um, and I guess it shows the Mexican right there, and nothing's changed right here so far. Well, actually, maybe this loss, because this did happen. But I'll cover those. Let's go ahead and... Head on over to the calendar. All right. So if you're not aware, uh, on this day, I broke the pattern day trade rule um, unintentionally because I am trading a large account and a small account. And pretty much everything I do in the large account, I try to do in my small account, um, except I took uh, two day trades and I stopped out of something over here on these days. And anyways, it ended up triggering the pattern data rule. So anyways, I'm going to have to take this money and put my other, in my other account. I'm not too happy about it. But the show must go on. And I'm curious. I'm going to know how long does it take for me to get to 100%. I really wanted to get it this week, which is actually the current week. I really want 100% there. There was plenty of opportunity, but, you know, it's hard to... We're so used to the market going up that it's hard to want to short it heavy on the downside. But let's go ahead and uh, break it down, see what happened. And note how this says seven trades. That includes trades I was in on this week that I held into here and closed them. So it's like I took seven trades that day. And like this one right here is actually just a close. All right, so... January 18th. Here are the two day trades I took on the SPY and the Qs. And I opened BABA. And these trades, these closed ones, are ones I held from last week. So since those are the ones I closed, let's go ahead and review those and how they um, turned out and why I did what I did. Right, so if you recall last week, um, what I was anticipating. And I did kind of break one of my rules, so I'm going to be 100% honest. So there was volume coming in off of this trend line, right? But it wasn't heavy, dark pool buying action. So, But I went long anyway, so it was a good reminder. It's not too often where this type of situation happens where heavy, um, late um, dark pool prints start coming in and you have to wait for this. It's like a reminder. Like It, it doesn't happen too often on these corrections when they happen. And once it happens, like so this was my reminder. All right, now i got to wait for the buying. I get more of that in a little bit. So anyways, what I was looking for, I was looking for this trend line to hold and at least test the AEMA before we do anything further. And if you've been trading the market at all last week, you are aware that did not happen at all. <laughs> uh, so obviously entered on this green candle right here, it gapped down and it's obviously sold off all week. So, but anyways, that's why you cut your losses. Took my loss, um, lost way more than I wanted to, but it is what it is, and I am moving on with the life. Yeah, took, the, took a loss. It happens. All right, BABA. 
Oh, also, you may notice how I close this one for a loss, but then I open BABA again right here, and I'll explain why. Um, I don't have it right not right here, but I was bullish, and then I flipped bearish, and I'll explain why here in a second. All right, so I was looking for a bullish play, right? And I need to go back and follow this a little bit more formatted. So you see, I have the 140 long calls. I have three of them. I got in for $1.77. I was looking for these uh, large prints that came in. There was a 1.7 mil print. I know it's hard to see right there, but you'll be able to see it in the next uh, BABA um, trade. But anyways, um, there's a uh, print right there, 1.7. There's also this 400, and so and it tested this weekly, just as I said right there. So I was looking for a boom, boom, all right here, test the AEMA. Let's go. Um, did not happen. Uh, we started to close back below um, the 50th May, and so I was like, all right. So I took the loss because I like to see that level hold if I want to take it long. If we drill into what happened so like the green arrow if you're not aware is where I entered I went to bullish the red candles where I exited the position and it did not work out because as it was holding you see how it got wiki right there started to push down I was like, all right so maybe that level isn't going to um, break so I stopped out and then so then I re-entered a just since I'm on the subject of this, I did stop out, and this is exactly where I stopped out. So I watched it rally come up. It's testing weekly resistance and this 1.7 mil print level. All right. Once it started to fade on this candle right here is when I closed. I uh, closed the position. That's when I stopped out. You know, right. So there's a very, there's a quote I really do enjoy listening to, or it really drives home to me. And you need the mental agility and flexibility to um, acknowledge it and practice it. To acknowledge when you're wrong and able to flip the script and go the other way. A lot of traders, or new ones particularly, whenever they are wrong, they don't have the ability to flip it and go long. So if I was going long, you got to have the ability to flip and go short. And there's something said by Jesse Livermore that's... Uh, like I said, really stuck with me. And it's okay to be on the wrong, catch yourself on the wrong side of the tape. It's just not okay to stay there. And if I'm expecting a move, I want to go ahead and participate. So I wanted uh, my flip my position and went bearish. So this is how I waited for flipping bearish. I stopped out here. I waited. And if you're unaware, um, price retest um, dark pool levels. So this level held like so this was drawn from a few days ago there was no reason for this um, price to stop there other than this print level so basically this suggests that this computer is still buying so I was all right but there's also this right here is it the same computer we don't know so I waited and it came up here and retested weekly resistance and this print level and when it failed again I was all right I'm getting short and then I was just going to put my stop at a uh, I 135 and then position size for a max loss, though I'm completely okay with losing if it was completely go against me. So that's why I went short. And then for some reason, the picture disappeared. Okay. And I'm trying the impossible right now doing this while the wife's at work and I have my three-year-old and six-year-old with me. So if you hear yelling in the background, I apologize. I promise they're okay. They're just being boys. <laughs> um, so like I said, it got back below the 50, right? It was holding and uh, back below in this range. So I was all right. So maybe let's come back down and test the support level. Back below the prints, the patterns there, back in the range, take it lower. Um, I ended up closing it yesterday. So we did get a gap up, there was news. And this is where position sizing goes a long way. So I was willing 
when I say position size to max loss, like if you are wanting to lose, if you're only willing to lose $500, do not put more than $500 into the trade. So if it was to that, say whatever the news is, it goes all the way up to $200 and it is a complete max loss, that risk is still within your risk parameters and it is okay. Don't rely on a stop loss um, to trade options just because it, it most of the time won't work. I tried it for a long time that way and it doesn't work in my experience. I had a hard time doing it. If you have a way to do it, please write in the comment section. Let me know. But anyways, gapped up. I was all right, I'm holding it. Market's super weak, maybe it'll bleed back down. It did um, gap up below um, the 131 level, which was that uh, weekly range, gap down. And then right here, it, it looked like the market was going to bounce, but I think that's when they were hitting the 200 SMAs. I was like, all right, well, this might be the bouncing moment. So I'm going to take what profit I have, which was a loss because it was up here. And now it's back down here. But I'll take what I have and uh, move on. And then now I could, once those uh, gains are realized, like settled, then I can move the money into my Thinkorswim account and grow the same amount there. I'm just going to do a clean trade over just a different platform. Same amount of money. So, yeah. That was Battler. All right, and PG, Park Train Gamble. This is the one I said last week, um, even like it says right there, I entered a spread. I got the 160, 165 pull call spread. Um, looking for it to retest the highs. And the setup here was, is there was a 1.5 mil print. It consolidated right here, got above this little range, like a tight little range, looking for it to go back up to this area. Um, but I didn't realize this. So that was a, a doozy. So my plan was uh, the following week, go ahead and get out of it, hopefully near break even, and uh, pay more attention. I don't know what happened there. I don't know why I didn't catch it. But um, as the market got weak, so did Procter & Gamble. I ended up closing it um, on a loss because I, like it shows right here, I injured here. And the market got down, so the Procter & Gamble earnings came out, and it's back up. <laughs> and it's always the luck, right? But um, anyways, earnings is a, a roulette or a gamble. It's like you never know what's going to happen. It's a scratch ticket. So I'm okay with taking that loss. It was a good trade. Besides, I got in at a wrong time. So, yeah, like it says, um, I was willing to lose 250 I lost about 200 And... Moving on. eBay. This one I did alert to the simpler trading community. And this setup is relatively, um, it's pretty straightforward. This is probably one of my highest probability setups. Is uh, So everything's red. So ADX is red. It's at the lower 60 day of the channel. Stacked EMAs are negative. It's below VWAP. The daily, weekly, and monthly VWAPs are negative. You have a Large swing low, it's below all the moving averages right here below the 250, which is the blue line is 50. The 200 is purple. And I just realized I was going to talk fast there. I try to slow it down a little bit. But the point is, is there is a bunch of prints above here in this consolidation phase. So how do I see this? I see this as a bear flag. So you have your pole going down and your flag. When we got a close below this trend line, that was my trigger to get short. So, what happened? Um, I scaled half the uh, half the position for 50% of the um, uh, risk. And so once I closed 50%, um, and then I alerted to everybody else probably an hour later, like, go ahead and close it. And the reason I wanted to close it is, I'll go ahead and explain it here. This would be a good little reason. Um, for 2022, Oops, E baby. For 2022, and obviously the market got weaker, so it would have been a really good trade, but we didn't know the market was going to act like that. So 62 was a level over here. See how many times it was um, tested? So that's a potential support level as we go across to here. You can see it was holding at the time. And then, of course, the market got weak, and, of course, the uh, lowering tides going to lower all the boats. So, therefore, it was uh, going further down now. But I always saw it as we took entry here, 
went down, hit support. We got 50%. Let's take the risk off the table and uh, put another trade. So that was eBay. And that was a spread, uh, a bull put spread. So a short to 62 puts. I'm oh, sorry, uh, that's a bear put spread. I apologize. Yeah, so bear put short to 62 puts, long to 65. And then the target was down for about 62. So all in all, risking uh, $200. And uh, locked in 146 uh, minus commissions, so about 123% return on the risk um, as far as where my stop um, potentially could have been. But yeah, so there was that, and I already covered BABA. All right, and these day trades. This is one way you could use Prince to do day trades. That's how I like to do it on these zero days to expiration trades. And uh, here's an example. So if you're unaware, these 205s and 251s, those are dark pool, dark pool levels. So these transactions happened yesterday, and they're just being reported today. The point is, is you see the trade price? Uh, we were below them. So my small account, I was risking $100. I ended up making 136 when I ended up closing it after commissions. And this is the setup. So it's below, on, from the daily chart, it's below all the prints. So this is what the day looked like. We got below um, 335. So what was my goal uh, as it was going lower? So intraday, it looked like this. So so prints came started coming early. Typically, um, if you're with me in the training room, uh, simpler trading, uh, I guess while I mentioned that, if you have any questions on this, I am in the simpler training room from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Central where you ask me these questions um, to get more one-on-one uh, -on -one interaction how I'm uh, trading the strategy. And um, if you're not too sure you want to make um, the leap, um, if you haven't heard me say before, there is a, a link tree in the description box that you click there and it'll say options gold room or if you want to do any of the other rooms, you can try them. And uh, you can try them for a week for $7. And any of those rooms give you access to the training room. And uh, then you can uh, go ahead and see. Actually, scratch that. I think it's only the options gold room that gives you access to the training room. Could be wrong, but I'm 100% sure the gold room does. That's something I should check. I'll let you all know. But yeah, the gold room gives you access to the training room. I didn't want to tell you all that. And then you trade features and then join the features room, but not get into the training room. So. Let me let y'all know, but the options gold room, you can try it out for a week for $7. You get access to a bunch of different types of traders. I can guarantee you, you will find one that fits your trading style and goals because they are, we are so uh, multiverse, I guess as I say, in that type of area. But I'm in the training room, and that's where you guys have questions about this. For $7 to try it out. Click that link and try it. All right, so this is the setup. Um, so these are the trend lines that were on the daily chart that I showed earlier, and this is the cues. And so uh, prints that are, dark pool prints that are rolling in early. Um, typically, they don't roll in until probably 11 or 12, but they were it's 9 o'clock and they're already rolling in. Typically, when they start rolling in, rolling in early, a lot more come. So I was telling me it's going to be a heavy dark pool day. All right, now the setup. So price is below the um, prints. So actually, this will maybe help drive it up. So if you look at this. The range is basically 376, right? Let's go ahead and look at what the prints were on here. 380. So the so you have to ask yourself, the time and sales window just printed. Someone got filled on the queues at 380. So these are, uh, just to clarify, this is basically, um, the scanner picks up all the heavy time and sells. Anytime they hit the tape, um, the tape meaning time and sells right here. So like when tra transactions get filled, they go across here and then you can, uh, that scanner catches them for me. So what I'm getting at, so someone as the price was down here at the 375 ish level, Prints were hitting 380. So that tells me we're below it. We're more than likely, we're probably going to close below them, right? Um, so at that point, I got short. 
as it did this. There was... It's not showing it anymore. There was a different um, picture there a second ago. I had the opening and closing picture. There it is. Alright, yeah, so this is where I entered. I right, chopped around right here, tested pre-market highs, the, neg the ticks were getting negative. I entered short here with my stop above, right? And what I, the way I traded this, I did this with the spread simply because it is a small account. And so I did the seven, oh, sorry, 374, 376 bear call spread for a 94 cents, I believe. So close to a one to one risk reward. And what happened as it was fading and support started to hold um, down here, I ended up closing it. So like I said, it's over here, it faded all day. So theta's in my favor, it's going in my direction. And once it started to hold right here and turn around, um, since I was only short here and I didn't know if it maybe it, it could easily turn back around, right? So I go ahead and locked it in there. And from my risk, it was a nice easy trade. Nothing uh, went against me and made uh, basically uh, $136 on 100 risk. And if you need to see it more intraday, I'll be out here. Oops. That was the cues. Go here and we'll drill down to a 5 minute. So you can see how it correlates. It Came up, tested that level, like I said, confirmed lower, entered the short position, and as it started to curve at that level right here, that's where I got out. Obviously, didn't know this was going to happen, otherwise it held on, but you never know. So that was that setup, and basically it is negative, um, negative ticks already below the dark pool levels that are printing. I'm going to take a short. And that was the exact same setup in the SPY. Same picture right here. The SPY, um, it's 464.72. So prints are hitting the tape at 464.72. But the stock is already down, or the ETF is down at 458. So how is this price hitting this level? Easy, because this day, in this area, they were selling. But you don't know that because they're hiding it. Anyways, but same setup. Negative ticks below the prints. And this one had a daily um, chart pattern. Another bear flag. You got your breakdown. You have your trend line. Started to break the trend line. Got short. Same concept. I was short the... Um, the 458, 460 bear call for 94 cents once again, and this is how it looked on the day. Close it for 50% return on the risk, and so you see it broke that trend line like I had on the other picture, drifted lower, and as 456 held, um, and I got above the 50 SMA, I went ahead and closed it for 50%. Go back. All right, let's see what's next. There we go. All right, so now it's all of them. And the only other thing on this other day is this bad trade I opened, I closed. But I'll go ahead and just cover it again so you understand what I'm saying. So close this one for a loss, reopened here, and this is the one I closed on Friday. Um, so all after all the PNL totals came through, I ended up only being down 258. All right, so just go here. All right, the one trade on Baba. So same trade, and it's the same picture. Like I said, it rallied up. I went short. Um, same picture here, relative to the 50, so I got rejected, market's getting weak. So this time, like I said, I entered the 125, 130 bear call spread because IV is higher. You get a little bit more bang for your buck. And, and same thing, like it says here, shows here. So 
Enter short, cap, out. Just like I re um, evaluated a second ago. But that is it for um, this week. I will more than likely, since it'll probably take a little bit to get money moved over to the other account, I will um, probably make a video next week. What I'm thinking about doing is creating a video for people that haven't seen me show you how you can benefit with this information during a correction. So it's kind of funny. When I started introducing this concept to the simpler trading community where we weren't in the middle of a correction, I would explain to them how to use it from a, the correction that started February 20th and then um, how to spot the buying. And then ironically, I literally, actually, I have to chart it up right here. I will just gladly show you real fast. Be a quick um, commercial to what is happening. All right, so I go all the way back to the last correction here. I use this as an example I've been showing people, or people in the simpler trading room. So all these dark pool levels that started coming in right here, we started closing below them, and then this is what happened. Then we rally a big sell, and then we spotted, I spotted a big buying at the bottom, and that is what triggered the rally back higher. So basically, I've been telling people that's how you could benefit from it, because a lot of people have questions like, well, how, what's the difference between that and market profile, and things of that nature, which are all valid questions. And uh, ironically, up here, I've been watching uh, anything above 10 million shares. I get, I start to question. And so there was a bunch right here on this level. And then at this level is a pretty heavy sell print. And then we've been going down ever since. And I am staying bearish until I see those big buy prints come in again. But if you're in a simply trading room, I'll cal calculate all the prints again to see what we need to look for. But other than that, um, that's all I have for y'all. And stay tuned for next week's video. Maybe that will help clear up a lot of things if you don't hang out with me in the room. And so, yeah. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Hope you found this video helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'll gladly um, clear it up for you. And so, yeah, stay safe out there. Um, have a plan and be patient for this uh, market as it is um, getting a little dicey. So take care, everyone. Talk to you later.